friends forever, that's what we are. Through the thick and the thin, we're friendship stars. We're banger main buddies from the days of old. We laugh, cry, and hug, friendship solid as gold. My soul could whatever started a year ago. We share our stories, and your stories were told. 80s, 90s, memories that give us glee. And on the block, party shows, and KOTB. Now our friendship circle has grown by far. Hashtag friends forever, that's what we all are. Boom! And if you don't know, now you know. My soul called whatever for life. Hashtag MSCW. Hashtag friends forever. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. It's a Saturday night. Sure is. Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Speaking of which, Kevin yeah. is that. Oh, yeah. Steve Martin and Mar- Martin Short. I think that's really cool. I think so, too. I think that's going to be a good time. He should have fun. Yes. He'll enjoy it immensely. I really love Steve Martin. I do, too. Like, he's just... I read that book that he wrote a while back. I can't remember what it was called, but I read it when I was at the airport. Um, Shayla bought it for me. Oh. It was was a very nice nice book. Yeah. I like him. He's funny. Mm -hmm. And Martin Short's funny. They're, like, classic. Like, classic comedians. Yes. So... Hopefully he's having a nice time. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's having a blast. Sadie's hanging out with the kids upstairs. They're making TikToks. Yeah. <laughs> My so-called whatever on yeah. TikTok. Follow go, us. Go go find us. Maybe we'll post the TikToks they make from tonight. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. We'll see how they turn out. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. It should be fun. E. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, how, uh, what's going on? How's your week? You know, it sucked and it was good at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it was like, it, like, it was really sucky, but then it was like really good. They, like, I had some really sucky moments and some really good moments this week. Well, I'm sorry you had sucky moments. That's all right. But I celebrate the good moments. Yeah. I'll, I'll, here, I will start celebrating right now. I will tell you. Oh, perfect. Okay. So. Sarah, that we know, yeah, in Boston, yeah, she, um, has this Instagram account, and it's called INFJ Woman. Okay, okay, and INFJ is like her personality type. It's oh. like Myers Briggs. Have you ever like heard of that or Myers Briggs or whatever? Yes. Um, I am an INFJ. Oh, did not realize I was an INFJ. I took the test a couple times. Yeah. And like I kept taking it like I wanted myself to be. Yeah. And I kept getting like different letters, like different. But I she has a podcast and it's called INFJ Woman. Yeah. It's so interesting. Like it was mind opening for me. Really? It really was. You've got to listen to it. It's, I will. Just a lot of the things she said really rang true for me like i i was just like oh my gosh yes yes i know what you're saying there's people like that like like me like i didn't think like these people are just like um like i sense things a lot yeah like i i follow my gut a lot even if there's like logics i'm like well my gut saying this so i'm gonna go this way right (laughs) you're like even if it doesn't make that much sense right I mean, it's just like the podcast. Yeah. I mean, in reality, you could look at it, logistics, and be like, there's like three th- 300,000 million podcasts. Right. You know, like, why do you, why do you think this is going to work? And I was like, I'm just going with my gut. I think we should do it. You know? I mean, I had a lot of logistics to back it up, too, but mostly I go with my... But there's like all these different things, and I really fell into it. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I think that this is really relatable to me. And I just kind of like immersed myself with it this week. And I learned a lot about myself. Interesting. (laughs) You know? So I've taken that. Yeah. And I don't remember what I, I don't remember what my thing was. So there is a, there is a link you can go to and I'm going to type it up. I think it's called 16 personalities.com. Yes. It's called 16 personalities.com. You can go there and you can see what your personality letters are it will tell you and it's free and it's like really good so you take the test again you take the test oh, okay but remember to take it and it says it and like i had to like i had to take it a couple times because yeah. i realized after i took it i was like i'm not really like that like that's how i want to be that's how i like 
see myself, but I'm not really like that. So when I've done tests like this, because like I've worked for different companies that right. have you take those these tests. Right. I always do it as I am. Always as I am. I'm very, very truthful. Okay. So I'm doing it as I am, as I thought I was, but I'm not. Like I thought I was more of a logical thinker than a feeler. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm more of a gut person I than I am a logical. That. But I put logical. <laughs> but you didn't, but you couldn't tell yourself that. But I that, couldn't right. tell myself that. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. I know exactly And so what when saying. Sarah was telling me all these things, I'm like, yeah, I relate to that. I relate to that. And then it was like, well, why did I answer that way on that? Because yeah. that's not true. Why would I have put, like, I was more of a logical. Right. Because I do use logic a lot. Yeah. Mostly with my work. I was going to say. Probably more with work. Right. Than and in so like... I guess I was like, a lo- it was like situational. Um, I wasn't looking at the bigger picture. Yep. Which again, is kind of, that's me. I mean, I do look at the bigger picture. And that was another thing. It's like, yeah, I, I look at the big, but I don't like, it's, it's all in there. You'll see. You'll yeah. see. And you don't have to. I mean, even if you're not an INFJ, you totally should listen to her podcast because it's still relatable. Like there are bits and pieces you can take from it. And just like how she's changing her life based on like her personality type. And she's huh. like going going for things and, you know, no excuses. Just... I'll it's, have to listen to it. It's really, it's really awesome. That's cool. And, yeah. And shocked her first episode was about cutting people off, slamming the door. And I was always like, I don't do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know if I'd ever done that, but I actually have. Yeah. Like, and I didn't realize it until I started listening to her and I'm like, okay, yeah, there's been people in my life that I realize that are incredibly toxic and I just stopped talking to them. Right. So it, so in your case, I it, don't, it maybe wasn't like a literal slamming of a door. Correct. But it was like, we're just not going to go I'm there done. anymore. Yep. And I didn't realize that I'd done that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, and so I was like, well, I just, I don't think I've ever done that before. And she's like, well, then you might not be like an INFJ. But then I listened to her podcast and I was like, yes, yes. No, I do that. No, I have done that. Okay. Right. It's just but it wasn't a literal what- like. It was over a course of time. And then yeah. finally it was like I had enough. And I was like, no. That makes sense. So. But that's good. I'm That's that's awesome. Yeah. That sounds like, like a very interesting podcast. It really I'm gonna was. Listen to. Yeah. So you guys, if you're interested in that kind of thing and like personalities and go check her out. Um, she's in our group. She's a, she's yeah. a blockhead. And um, she's a Jordan lover. And she's great. Jordan. And we got to meet her in person. I've met her multiple times. Yeah. Because I saw her in New York and then I saw her again in, we saw her in Boston. Yeah. Um, when we went to, well, not Boston, but Hingham. Right. Right. And that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. She's very cool. Yeah. So what's the podcast name again? It is INFJ Woman. Awesome. Yes. And we must be able to find it wherever there's podcasts. Yep. You can go to our website, INFJWoman.com, and you can find her on on Pinterest. I've got Pinterest on the brain, and I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> um, you can find her on Instagram, too, on INFJ Woman. Cool. So, yeah. So you, just really cool. speaking of Pinterest. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Nikki's been like Pinterest. I am not a Pinterest crazy person. You know I this. am not. You know this. Even a little bit. You know this. I've talked we've talked about this because I've always said it's very overwhelming to me. Yep. And I get lost in it. And then I'm like, what did I accomplish? I don't know as if I've accomplished anything from this. Yeah. So that's how I have felt about Pinterest personally. So this is this is interesting. This is a turn. So I started talking um, to people. Sarah was one of the people that had talked to me about this. And um, a couple other people had mentioned it. I think Maria was one of them. And about creating our Pinterest, a Pinterest page that revolved around topics that we discuss, but also highlight our podcast episodes. So that's exactly what I did. (laughs) I have been working on this all week and I freaking love it. And it's also opened the door for all those ideas that we got. Yeah. I'm adding those. That's awesome. Some of them are secret because I want to surprise. Right. 
But um, <laughs> I've I've gone ahead and like just been gathering every night, gathering stuff. That's and cool. It's just so much stuff that we can cover. We have so much content that we can talk about. And I'm really excited about our 90s, 80s episode. 80s, 90s episode. 90s, 80s. Why I, I know, say it like that? that? Um, I'm really excited about our next episode, which we're going to talk about <gasps> 80s and 90s, the homes of the 80s and 90s. And how like, I am so excited the style and architecture has changed. Mostly home decor. Right. Yeah. Like... Not really architecture, because we're not going to get into, like, an architectural digest conversation. No. <laughs> no. But, yeah, like the like the homes that you grew up in. Right. That you and I grew up in. Right. And that things that you remember that maybe you didn't realize, like, everybody had in their house. Right. For a reason. Right. I can't wait to talk about that. Oh, my gosh. Because you started talking about that. I'm like, oh, my gosh. My aunt had, like, all these things in her house. And that's why. But we'll tell you why. Because there were, was no internet. There was no right. Pinterest. Right. So, you know, that's how that's how it be. And so it's going to be a cool topic. Also, yeah. if anybody has anything to add to it, if they want to send us like pick a yes, pics or anything. Yes, please. Like if you have a picture of like your, your living room. Oh, we want to see it. Or your kitchen. Oh, we want to see it. Oh, I would love to see your kitchen. I've already started screenshotting some of the comments that were made on some of the posts. Yeah. And some of the tweets that we got. Actually, I don't think we got any tweets. We may have. Um, but we got some things on Facebook and the Facebook group and the Facebook page. Yeah. It was really cool. But I'm I would love to see all the Harvest Gold that yes, you have. Yes, Harvest Gold. See, I never had Harvest Gold, though. We'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll we'll get into. I had all another of it. thing. Nan had Harvest Gold. Yep, my apartment, Long Grail, had Harvest, Harvest Gold. gold. <laughs> yes, with the brown. Yeah, with the like brown um, accent. Yes, it was like the brown fade, like yes. gradient. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But um, we'll get into all that next week. But it's yes. gonna be a really good episode. Yeah, I'm so excited. I hope like my appliances that I'm choosing. Aren't like the harvest gold of appliances. They are. They are the ones. Of that course, I'm they are. Like, like, oh, all, like no. everything. In like thirty years, forty years from now, we're all gonna look back on our appliances today and be like, oh, "Those were really, those are old." Yeah, but the ones that have been in my house right now have been here for almost. That stove has been here for almost twenty years, and it's still. Well, yeah, because like two thousands. Yeah, it's still okay. It is. But like, just like the Harvest Gold was still okay in like ninety nine, right? Okay. Wow. I mean, it Kinda. wasn't, but it was. It well, was still acceptable. Nan had it right up till. Oh, she man. had that fridge. I'm pretty sure. You know was... what? They don't make things like they used to. No, they don't last that. And her long. fridge was always like so clean. I bet it. She was. would take everything out like once a month. Take everything out and clean down, wash down everything. Oh, my god! I can't do that. I'm, I'm going to hire somebody to do that. I haven't done that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Actually, I did do that not that long ago. I, You know what? I, I, I did had it, to. I did it last. I did it last fall. So I'm up. I'm up for doing it again. Yeah. I, I can't believe I'm admitting it that it was that long ago, but it was last fall. I did it earlier this summer. Actually, I did it with a broken foot. Oh. Um, cause it was either I do it or my mom does it. Uh -huh. And I was like, no, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So I saddled up a chair in front of my fridge and I emptied it out and cleaned it. Oh, we, um, well, we empty out our fridge. I shouldn't say that. Kevin does that. He empties out the fridge. Well, you, em you have to take out the, all the time, all the yeah. salad dressings like, and the. Every day, every trash, every trash. What day. Yeah. The stuff that has gone by. And like, if there's like, obviously if somebody's dribbled something, we take like a Clorox wipe and clean it up. Right. Or whatever. But I'm talking like, take everything out. Yeah. Oh yeah. We oh, took out the, yeah, the, yeah. the things. My mom, my mom did wash those in the sink. Yeah. Oh so yeah. It was easier for her to do it than it's me. So, it's so much easier to do it in the sink. Wash oh down. yeah. And it gets a nice and clean. Nice squeaky clean. Um, that's all next on my agenda. I hope people aren't like gross. You waited a whole year. I don't know. You know what? There are some people out there that probably do it once a month like your nan did. And there yeah. are other people that have probably lived in their house for three years and they've never done it. So I'm not, you know, I don't think this is a judgment free zone. Okay. I hope so. I don't think anybody is going to be like, oh my gosh. It's just like washing down your walls. 
I don't wash my but walls. But I think that that was a thing of like the 80s and the 70s and the 60s because people smoked in their houses. Right. Because uh, my mom would wash down the walls quarterly. Yeah, my mom, like, my mom would wash the walls. She would like suds the walls and wash them down. And she'd always get the paint that was like not matte finish. It was like glossy because it yeah. was easier to wash the walls down. High gloss. Yeah. Um. Yeah, my mom always washed the walls. Okay. I just make sure that there's no, like, spider webs in the corners. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we're good. Also, I have those walls, like, in my living room. I oh, te- yeah. I have textured walls, you guys. It's almost like popcorn walls. It is like popcorn walls. Almost, it was, yeah. It's very reminiscent of 1979 when my house was built. Hey! And it's the only room that has that, but it's a big room. Yeah. But I never, I didn't take it down when we moved in because I just knew it was going to be too much and a mess. And I said, oh, we'll do that later. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to so be one hard day. to take that down. Yeah, it is. It's just like getting rid of popcorn ceilings. Mm-hmm. Like, e- My uncle told me that I'd be better off just taking the walls down and re... And re, like, um, yes. drywall. Yep. Yeah. And then he made some recommendations of what else I should do while I'm at it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I thought, and there were great recommendations. Okay. And um, we'll do it one day. My Uncle Bob, RIP. Oh, Uncle Bob. Oh, Uncle Bob. When we first moved in, he had had a lot of really good ideas. Oh, I thought thought it was like your Uncle Mike that came over one day and was like, you need to do these things. Oh, no, 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 no. (laughs) (laughs) No. I was like, I couldn't picture your Uncle Mike doing that. No, we were talking about it because Bob was very handy, like really good. Oh, yeah. So he was giving us some like ideas of things that we could do, like extending out like part of the wall Ooh. and like doing a different like like crown molding and really yeah he is very handy yeah oh I miss Uncle Bob I do too so does Sadie she talks about him sometimes he'd always too. say hi Nick how's it going he's a, he's a nice guy he was a nice guy yeah good guy yep. we miss him but anyway we are gonna talk about all the houses next week yes. What are we talking about this week? Oh, hey. Oh, hey, hey, hey. We should intro. Let's do it. This is Brooke. And this is Nikki. And this is my so-called whatever. Welcome to the block. I was going to do it with you. Oh. (laughs) Welcome Welcome to to the the block block party. party. Hey. We ain't leaving out nobody. Hey. Never. No, no, no. No, we would never do that to you. No, 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 (laughs) no. Hails to the no, to the no, no, no. Hails to the no. Can we also say R.I.P. Eddie Money? Oh my gosh. I've had two tickets to paradise in my head all day. Me too. I just, that song was a gem. <sighs> Take me home, home tonight. tonight. I was singing that earlier. Did you hear me? No, but I just Here. saw that when I was doing our Netflix movies of the week because that's going to come to a close because uh, Netflix, you suck when it comes to adding more 80s and 90s movies. Wow. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. But I added um, Take Me Home Tonight as one of the 80s movies to watch. Mm. Because, I mean, it didn't take place in the 80s, but it was all, it was 80s centric. 80s centric, yes. Yes. I didn't realize that Chris Pratt and Anna, um, his ex-wife there, was in that movie. Oh. I love that movie. I don't think I realized that either. Yeah. Huh. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. So we got some stories to read. We do. And um, I think Nikki's going to go first. Yeah, I'll go first. Sounds let's, good. Let's get this party started. Let's get this oh, party started. Oh, you know one thing we didn't talk quickly. about? What? Real quick. We went live. Well, you you were, you were had something going on. Right. So I did not go live. But um, Maria and I went live on Instagram. That was last weekend, right? Yes. Yeah. And we gave away a joey mcintyre waitress poster from the trash yay <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun and thank you all who attended and played and um were patient with us because like that was the first time we were doing something like that so it was like that's cool just to kind of like feel in the waters like how this was gonna all pan out and it was fun so who won oh katie loring won oh cool yes She's very excited. She's a Joe girl. So, and Amber got second place. Nice. So, I'm sending Amber a little 80s, 90s grab bag. A little something, something. A little something, something. Coming your way. Coming your way. 
Cool. So we'll do it again. Yeah. And maybe next time you can come on. Yes. Yeah. That will be fun. That would be fun. So, yeah, let's get some stories read. Let's do this. Let's do this thing. We got some good stories yeah. for you. We got a got a couple of long ones. Yeah. I always love the long ones. Yep. You get so right sit into back. It. Get a drink. Yeah. You know, relax. Well, don't do that. Don't get a drink and relax if you're driving. Because no. I know some of you are driving. Right. Don't do that. No, don't do that. Stay alert. Yeah. Stay alert. And wake up. Yep. And get, s- put the pedal to the metal. Right. Well, turn, no, turn on or, the AC. Yep. yep. Roll down the windows, whatever you got to do to yep. stay awake and yep. listen. Yep. If you're home. Yeah. Crack open a nice beverage. Maybe a Zima if they if they're still having them somewhere. Probably not. I, I got one in do. my fridge. It's two years old. Ew. <laughs> I kept it in there. I kept it because I couldn't. I, I What I need to do is just dump it out. And right. so I can keep the bottle. Right. But it, I was like, no, Kevin, keep it in there. He's <laughs> like, it's going to explode. I'm like, no, just keep it. I don't think it will. Well, it's, it's alcohol. In the so I thought, no, it's alcohol. So I'm thinking. It'll be fine. Isn't it fine? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So here we go. We've got Maggie's Donnie story. Donnie Wahlberg. National treasure. I thought you were talking about Marie. Donnie, Donnie Marie. Donnie Osmond. <laughs> Cause I'm a soldier in love. Like a shot in the dark. Nope. Talking about Donnie Wahlberg. Here we go. Maggie's Donnie story from 1989. Hi, Brooke and Nikki. Hey. Hope you are both doing well. I want to start off by thanking you for your podcast. Aw, thank you. I'm a little late to the game, as I just found it a few weeks ago. However, I'm addicted. Yeah, we like to hear that. I love everything about your podcast and, of course, love your block parties. I finally feel as if I have found my people in a community that loves NKOTB and all things 80s and 90s as much as I do. I thought I would share my NKOTB story with you. It's short and sweet but made me realize just how special Donnie was, even at the young age of 20. I cannot wait to hear this. I love these stories when he's younger. I'll preface this by saying I'm a Jordan girl, but on this day and thereafter, Donnie became tied with Jordan. Oh, here we go. This is a good one. Picture it. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Friday, November 24th, 1989. And yes, I just made a Golden Girls reference. (laughs) I was going to say, you sound like Sophia Petrella. (laughs) It was the day after Thanksgiving and my best friend Jenny and I were at a local mall. Back in the day when malls were amazing and very cool. I miss those days. We just went to the mall tonight. Super sad. Super sad. Depressing. And we couldn't find anything that we're looking for. It was sad. Amazon to the rescue. We were just trying to like, you know. Support the mall. Yeah. Yeah. We were depressed that afternoon because our favorite boys were playing in Hershey that night. And sadly, we were unable to get tickets. Aw. All of our friends were going. And as typical teenagers, we were envious and sad to be missing out on all the fun. We had also stayed up the entire night prior, hoping a connection of Jenny's would catch the boys arriving at Hershey so we could go and meet them. But sadly, we missed our chance. So like we always did back then, we perused the mall and, of course, hit the local bookstore for the latest issues of Teen Beat and Bot magazines. After leaving the bookstore, Jenny suggested that we walk down to the Gap because she had read the boys like to shop there. Ooh, that was like the <laughs> place to go. That was fall into the Gap. I bet that uh, Joey had some nice pants from there, some nice jeans. I bet Jordan did. Jordan, like some of the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Some of those styles. Jordan, did you wear corduroy jeans? I'm just wondering. I don't think he did. Asking for a friend. I made it in the nine, like in the nineties, like around. That's what like, I meant. That's what I meant. Like, oh yeah, like after this era. Yeah. yeah. Guess what? He, but he did every morning. With that like. Yes, that, when he had that. Yes. That like facial hair thing going and on. They were brown. I bet they were brown corduroy. Yes. I bet he wore like a little funky hat with it too. Yeah, maybe he had Adidas. Like maybe no, you know what they were? They're like that, like tannish. Like that, like, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? I know that exactly khaki brown. Kind of, kind he, of baggy. And he wore green Adidas, um, velvety shoes. The, the Sambas? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Jordan, are you listening? Tell us if that's true. <laughs> okay. Um, mind you, we had zero expectations of them being there. We're just trying to get our minds off the pending concert. As we knew, all of our friends were getting prepared for a fun night. 
As we entered the gaff, this is crazy. I'm telling you right now, I'm getting anxiety. (laughs) We walked by three guys, one wearing a North Side posse jacket. What? This is crazy. This This is is crazy. crazy. Of course, being shy and naive, we immediately walked out of the store to collect ourselves. Jordan, Joey, and Donnie were literally right in front of us, and we stood frozen. This is 1989, guys. This is freaking 1989. Like, this what? is 1989. How? How were they just standing in a gap? What are the chances? She was just. They were just like, hey, we heard they, you know, we're just going to go down the gap. We heard they like the gap. Let's it, go to the gap. It was meant to be. This whole shit, this was all meant to be right here this is crazy this is this is the stuff i live for right here (laughs) this is the shit i live for these like chance happening yes donnie came out of the store and said that jordan and joey were just looking for some downtime before that night's show knowing jenny was a donnie girl and that both of us were awkward and shy 14 year olds i did something i never thought i would do i asked donnie for a hug he was so sweet and gave us both a big hug and proceeded to leave we were all shell shocked. Did Donnie Wahlberg just hug us? Immediately, mall security showed up and refused to let anyone into the store when Joey and Jordan walked across the mall to the footlocker. We stood outside watching them try on shoes and eventually sign one of the signs in the store before being whisked away to Hershey. Teenage years are hard for many kids. I'm no more special or important than anyone else. But that brief encounter with Donnie that night stayed with me for years to come. I mean, holy, 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 holy. She got to hug Donnie Wahlberg. In 1989. In 1989. Like 1989 Donnie Wahlberg. How did he smell? I bet he smelled good. I wonder if she remembers. I bet he was wearing preferred stock. I was hoping (laughs) that he was. (laughs) It's been 30 years and I still love the boys. And even though I can't travel to as many shows as I would like, I do make an effort to see as many tours as I'm able to. And each tour is better than the last. My BFF Jenny, who was with me that cold night in November, will be attending the mixtape show with me and Hershey. Hey, in a few weeks. So this was, of course, sent well, back a while, a while ago. ago. And I went to the Hershey show as well. Hey. Yeah, hey. We are so excited to attend a show together. And after 30 years, actually sit together at the show. That is a whole other story. (laughs) We missed out on our VIP seats, but we do not care. The last few years have been filled with heartache for both Jenny and I. First, I lost my brother unexpectedly, Mm. who was like my second father. And just last summer, Jenny's dad passed away. I'm so sorry. sorry, guys. That's awful. We have been friends since we were five and have shared many good and not so good times together. And KOTB has always been one of those good memories. So after a few sad years, we are ready for positive memories and great time and a great time with our favorite boy band. Thank you again for all you have done and continue to do bringing together fans from all over the globe and give gals like me an opportunity to share my NKOTB love. You are two national treasures. Aww. Oh, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Maggie. That's All really the best, sweet. Maggie. Maggie, that I is love so you. sweet. And that story was friggin' great. That was a great story. Oh my god! See, there are more stories out there like it. There, there are. There are more stories out there like this. Absolutely, and we want to friggin' hear them. My soca, whatever at gmail dot com. That's guys. right. But could you imagine, like, okay, new kids on the block are playing at the Bangor Auditorium. I'm just gonna go to the Gap. I'm gonna go to the Gap because I heard they like the Gap. I would, and then they're at the Gap. Brooke, I don't think I would have been that cool and collected. I'm just gonna tell you right now. I, don't I think, think you I don't know think that would have been either. <laughs> I don't think I would have been security. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Donny- Paul Blart. <laughs> Can we get Paul Blart down here instead of Donnie giving me a hug. I think he'd be like, "Oh, I see the crazy eyes. I see him. <laughs> like She's got the crazy eyes." <laughs> oh God, Maggie, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. All right. I'm going to read Becky's NKOTB journey. Okay. I'm ready for it. This is a long one. I'm ready. Get settled in here, guys. But not if you're driving. Remember. That's right. That's true. I was inspired to share my NKOTB story from the beginning after hearing you read Lori's experience. I was born and raised in New Mexico, about an hour south of Albuquerque, in a town of about 9,000 people. I was a small town girl, living in a small town world. 
<laughs> Isn't it Lonely World? Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Living in a lonely world. Growing she up. She took the midnight train <laughs> going everywhere. That's not the words. <laughs> That's close. Growing up in a predominantly Hispanic town where country music and Latin music were vastly more popular than pop. My parents listened to country, 50s music, and the classic crooners like Frank Sinatra and Nat King Cole. Ah. Pop was foreign territory in my life. My only exposure to pop music was through my friends and in dance class. I took classes in tap, ballet, jazz, and hip hop from the age of four. Always wanted to take hip hop back then. Always wanted to. I did too. I would have been a freaking awesome hip hop dancer. See, I saying. always wanted to. I'm just to, saying. But you had to take tap and ballet first. Exactly. And I didn't want to take those. And I did try. And I was like, this sucks. I didn't want to take ballet. I loved tap. Yeah. As you guys know, I've told you the story of my grandfather making me the little thing so I could tippity tap, tip, tip, Oh, right, right. Tippity tap, tippity tap, tap. Um, so I love that, but my parents at the time couldn't afford putting me in dance class. That's okay. I took I took like a modern jazz dance at the Y. Have I ever talked about that? I don't think you have. I took a I took a modern it was called modern jazz. Did you like dance barefoot? Yes. Yeah. We did. Cool. And we did it to Escapade by oh, Janet Jackson. That's cool. And we Do were you like, remember the dance? Escapade. Like that. Do you remember the dance? Yeah, I just did it. And then it was we like. We should put it on our TikTok. <laughs> and then there was this like really cool part of this, the, the song where we all jumped and put our hands up. We did like a jump. <laughs> like, and we did it like in I a row, like a one VHS after the other. This. You know what? I think there is. Somewhere. I just don't know where it is. Oh. Probably my parents threw them away. But I bet it would be really good. Yeah. And so anyway, that was my intro to dance was at the Y. Modern jazz. <laughs> you like jazz? <laughs> In 1988, when Please Don't Go Girl first started getting widespread radio play, I was eight. I remember hearing Please Don't Go Girl on the radio for the first time. And thinking to myself, who is this? Who is this wonderful man singing to me? Man? <laughs> His little boy. Who is this wonderful Sorry. child? <laughs> who is this magical little child? Yes. I was hooked immediately. So I saved up my allowance and convinced my parents to let me buy the Hanging Tough cassette on our next trip to the mall in Albuquerque. Yes. I studied that cassette case like it was a subject in school. I learned everything I could about those five bad brothers from the Beantown land. Oh, yeah. I was hooked. The first time I saw a New Kids video, I think it was at a friend's house. We didn't have MTV or regular cable at my house, and I was drawn to Jordan and Joe immediately. Jordan, because of his dancing ability. Holy cow. I mean, that how, man dance. I mean, come on now. Even now. Come on now. And someday I plan to tell him that to his face. Hey, do it. Do it. Do it. Yes. And Joe, because, well, I don't know, but why not? He was younger and closer to my age. And when he sang, it gave me chills. Hey, that makes sense. And who wouldn't love Joe? True. Pretty soon, I was spending my allowance on any teeny bopper magazine I could get my hands on and putting up as many posters in my room as my parents would allow. For Christmas and birthdays, I got new kids stuff. I had the VHS, which like everyone else, I watched more times than I can count. I also had a new kids night shirt, a lunchbox, fanny pack, several books, puzzle, and at least one of those gigantic buttons. My parents even allowed me to join the old school new kids fan club. So cool. Sadly, all that memorabilia is gone now. Some of it my parents got rid of, and the rest I gave away or tossed during my I need to grow up phase. Aww. I've learned my lesson since then and have saved all my NSYNC stuff. Who can relate to that? Hallelujah. Except I, I sold some of my NSYNC stuff you in did. the yard sale. You, but you had a ton. I mean, I had that girl that had, did I show you the video of the girl that was on um the, the podcast, Girl, Were You Alone? Oh, yeah. Is it Girl, Are You Alone? Girl, girl, you, girl, were you alone? It's girl, were you alone? Yeah. Okay. Why do I always say girl, are you alone? Because it sounds like okay. that. So girl, were you alone podcast? The NSYNC podcast. Yes. Um, They have a Facebook group. And this girl posted this video of her NSYNC room. And I was like, I got, I had that. You had everything. I had that. Honestly, Nikki I had, had that. everything. I didn't have the Hot Wheels cars. You didn't? No. Oh. I think I need them in my life if I can find them. I bet you maybe can find them. But like, 
I was just like blown away. I was like, oh my gosh, I had that. I had that too. Like your whole bedroom was in sync. Yes, it was. Every paycheck was spent on in sync. It truly was. Every paycheck. Truly. Yes. So anyway, but I remember um, there was a yard sale and I had like, I had a double of a in sync bear and I put it in the yard sale. Yeah. And this little girl, she was special needs came and she was like i love insync so much like they were so i went inside my room and i gathered all the stuff that i was like you know whatever and i i was like you Here gave you it go. to her you can have she loved insync that was really nice she loved insync and yeah at the time i was like i gotta grow you up did the right thing gotta though. have at babies the, at that time you did the right thing yeah i kept a lot of stuff too though because I couldn't part with like my blankets or my Barbies or right. well, my marionettes. I mean, but I like the something. bears and like I had, oh my gosh, so yeah. much stuff, so much stuff. I kept the hit hit clips. I kept that. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the watch? Yeah. Remember the InSync watch that like played them like 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 yeah, a. Did you have that Tamagotchi? Yeah, you had that right. Oh, I still have it. I yeah. think it doesn't work, but oh my gosh. Anyway, sorry anyway. about that. Fast forward to March 2nd, 1991, the Magic Summer Tour. Woo! Now, I was just a few months shy of turning 12. I don't remember when exactly I found out, but I remember hearing on the radio that New Kids on the Block was coming to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Ooh. I was over the moon. A family friend of my parents had agreed to take me and her oldest daughter, who was about a year younger than me, to the show. Now, this was back in the day before the internet and cell phones. On the day tickets went on sale, my friend's mom jumped on the touch tone phone in her kitchen and dialed over and over again, trying to get through Ticketmaster. Tickets sold out in an hour. We were devastated. I remember moping for days after. It was the only time New Kids on the Block played in New Mexico. In fact, most artists don't play in New Mexico. Even NSYNC was scheduled to play in 2001 during the Pop Odyssey tour and ended up canceling the show at the last minute. That stinks. I kept my love alive until 1994 when they announced they were disbanding. I was a freshman in high school by then, and when I heard the news, I was devastated, but I kind of sensed the end was near after Face the Music and John left the group. Although that album still to this day has some of my favorite New Kids songs on it. I cry every time I hear If You Go Away. Me too. After high school, (laughs) I moved to Arizona College, and in college, I fell in love with NSYNC. Oh, yeah. I like Backstreet Boys too. But not as much as I loved NSYNC. Mm-hmm. It helped that two of the members of NSYNC were MMC alum, Mickey Mouse Club. Oh, yeah. Which I was obsessed with in my middle school, high school years. And when Joe and Jordan both started popping up on the radio and TRL solo. Jordan Knight, remix, so tight. I was ecstatic. <laughs> I even saw Jordan open for NSYNC. Talk about taking it full circle. Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. That when was we saw crazy. That. I was like, what is happening? Worlds collide. Yes. Talk about, oh, I already said that. I can only imagine what that must have felt like for both Jordan and NSYNC. Right. Over the years between 1994 and 2008, my love for New Kids on the Block was still there, just tucked into a part of my heart that I thought was long past. I feel ya. I tried to keep myself informed as to what they were doing as solo entities, but I wasn't as diehard as I had been during my youth. Can I interrupt you for a second? Yes, of course. I just want to say that I am really, like... I'm like rela- relation city. I'm like, like on the same. I like, feel you flow. Like we're we are kindred spirits. Yes. I don't know. Just saying. Maybe one day. Maybe one day we'll meet and we'll, we'll be meet. like, hey. And it'll be like old friends from the Navy. <laughs> oh, do, do we get those tattoos the same? I don't know. Maybe she or, has one. Do you have the same tattoo as me on the back? <laughs> it looks like you got it in the Navy in 46. <laughs> yeah. Over the years. Wait, I may have read that already. I'm still going to read it again. Okay. Over the years between 1994 and 2008, my love for New Kids on the Block was still there. Just tucked into a part of my heart that I thought was long past. I tried to keep myself informed as to what they were doing as solo entities, but I wasn't as diehard as I had been during my youth. I knew about Jordan and Joe's solo careers and that Donnie was acting. Can I tell you how utterly and completely shocked I was when I found out the guy who shot Bruce Willis in The Sixth Sense was Donnie Wahlberg? Spoiler alert. Wait. <laughs> what? Okay. For real. I was like, who wasn't? Don- Donnie Wahlberg wasn't in The Sixth Sense. I can remember saying this. Even he wasn't. They were like, yes, he was. No, he wasn't. Well, there he is on the friggin' marquee. Not marquee, but the right. end credits. Right. Donnie Wahlberg. What in the world? I never saw the movie. 
Oh my god, Brooke. But <laughs> Okay, two movies that Brooke needs to watch and we're doing rewatches. Remember for. we were gonna watch Six Sense for Halloween? That's right, we are. Yeah. And we're gonna watch Better Off Dead this winter sometime. Because I've never seen the Sixth Sense. I didn't know that Johnny Wahlberg shot Bruce Willis. Now I know. That's okay. Cause you know what? That was twenty years ago. And it you, is far past you the spoiler already time. knew that he was dead. Who, Bruce Willis? Yes. Yeah. Isn't the kid dead too? No. Oh. Well, anyway. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but um but yeah, I I didn't have that experience that other people had of like that was Johnny Wahlberg. Like I went and found a video clip and I was oh. like, "Oh, it's Johnny Wahlberg." Oh. Cuz it tells me it is. <laughs> but it wasn't until many years later, like YouTube years. So it had been a long Are time. Are you sure because I feel like we talked about it. I never saw it. Because I can remember somebody saying that that guy you liked from that group. He's in that movie you like. I don't. And I was like, that. "What are you talking about? What group that I like? Insync? No, Insync. Yeah, Insync was around then. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, that was like prime Insync. Yeah, it was Donnie Wahlberg. Then in two thousand eight, it happened. It did. I don't remember seeing the formal announcement that they were reuniting on the Today Show like so many others did. I actually heard it from a friend. He and I had worked at a Virgin Megastore together just after I graduated college. And um, that's a cool job. I worked there for oh yeah, it is. I worked there for almost two years before I figured out that a career in PR at record la- at a record label probably wasn't in the cards for me. Aww. The store had closed years before and we'd both found different paths. I was now teaching. It was engaged to be married. I remember seeing him one day and he said, I have something for you. <gasps> what? He still had ties to music and knew some of the label reps. So I think he got a copy of The Block early. What is it? I asked. Just listen to it. He told me. So I popped it into my car CD player right then and... And there, and as soon oh. as the music started to play, I nearly wet myself. Oh my god! OMG! What is this? Who I think it is? It is. It's I'm, real. I'm pretty sure he laughed at me and said, "Yep, it's New Kids on the Block." They got back together. This is their new album. Shut up! And the longer I listened, the more I blushed. Kids, they were not. No, they were grown men. Not anymore. Grown man. I. You can give me some grown man. Yeah. Some of the tracks on that album still make me blush like a giddy schoolgirl. Yes, yes. And they really do. That's why I love it so much. I know it's it, my favorite, and it makes you. You're like, oh my gosh, they sing it. What they singing? What I think they're singing about? Yes, the, what, what? What? I know. Like where? Like where do those squeaky clean boys go? Yeah, they gone. They gone. They gone. They long gone. That's okay. That's all right. Then it was announced that they were going on tour and they were uh. coming to Phoenix. A friend of mine from college, Rebecca, called me and said, we're going, right? Yes! <laughs> Heck yeah. The full service tour. It was <sighs> our birthday presents to each other. As I have said in a previous episode of my so-called whatever, at this point in my life, I had only ever, I only ever had nosebleed seats to a concert. Oh. I could never afford the good seats. Not on a teacher salary in Arizona. And I was newly married. We had a blast that night. Now, in doing my research for this story, everything I could find said that first show we went to was at an outdoor arena, but I remember a much smaller indoor show and I have bad pictures somewhere. I remember it because at one point during the opening acts, my friend and I went to the bathroom and we met this girl who was handing out signs on neon, neon pink printer paper. She was decked out in full 80s gear and I remember her asking if we would take signs and hold them up when Jordan saying, I'll be loving you forever. Remember the two girls sitting next to us that were fully decked yes. out? They were awesome. They were full on 80s. And they were like younger. Like a lot younger. Yeah, they were. And they were like in it to win it. Absolutely. They and were I, cool. They were cool. They were they really, really nice. weren't that much younger than us, but it just felt like But at it. the time, because we were like in our 20s, like we were probably like 28, 28, 29. And they were like 24. Right. And we were like, so at the time, that's so like, much younger. Right. <laughs> right. Um, she said that she and her friends were basically following the tour and that Jordan responded to the signs at every stop. We politely refrained by saying that we had nosebleed seats and then he probably wouldn't see them from that high up. On our way back up to our seats, my friend asked me, how do people follow the tour? Do they not have lives or jobs or families? (laughs) Do they? And how do they afford that? We didn't get it then, but I totally get it now. Oh, yeah. Fate must have been smiling on us that night because on our way back to our seats, an usher stopped us and asked to see our tickets. He then traded our tickets for seats on the floor. What? That usher? Deserves a medal. He surely does. We have been lucky and met an usher like that before. We did. I mean, we were not. It wasn't like. No, nope, but he was like. Nose girls, the floor. You girls can go right up there. Yeah. You go, go ahead. Right up into the front. You go right up in the front. I'm here. Nobody's okay. going to tell you not to go. I'm telling you to go. Go. Right. 
And he was a really nice old man. Yeah. And he stayed there the entire time. Yep. I got that rose, damn it. The show was not sold <laughs> at, any, at any and all costs. Beer all over Brooke. <laughs> the show was not sold out and they were trying to fill the lower level seats. It was the closest I've ever been in a concert. Mind you, I am 4'11 and still oh, couldn't wow. see very well. But at one point in true and KOTB fashion, they came out into the crowd and Joe was just a few rows oh. behind us. I was squealing like my giddy eight-year-old self would have. I think Donnie may have even crowd surfed at one point. Afterward, we got into big trouble with Rebecca's younger sister, Melissa, for not inviting her. <gasps> I was friends with her, too. And truthfully, I had no idea she even liked new kids. We were both huge NSYNC fans and had gone to their concerts together. But she'd never said a word about liking the new kids. So we promised the next time we would take her. We missed out on the NKO TBSB tour. I don't remember why. Probably because I couldn't afford it. July 14th, 2013, the package tour, Glendale, Arizona. This time, Rebecca, Melissa, and myself went to the show. It was an early birthday present to Melissa. Her birthday was the next day. Again, we had nosebleed seats, but we didn't care. We had dinner at a sushi place near the arena to celebrate beforehand. I remember seeing a very pregnant woman before the show wearing a shirt that said, Donnie, we need to talk. <laughs> and all of us burst out laughing. Oh, my God. If that was any of you listening, I seriously thought that was probably the most clever shirt i had ever seen that is adorable that is and if johnny saw it i would love to hear his reaction it was a magical night we sang and danced and screamed like we didn't have a care in the world i love that oh, i know see that's what's so fun i know it's like all your worries just go away they just melt and then all of a sudden donnie Wahlberg's like right there right and then he passes you and you and you brooke touch him on his shoulder right and you're like whole you just have to think and you're like i have his sweat on my you, hands you just have to think though like that's donnie Wahlberg. that's donnie Wahlberg. donnie friggin that's 1989 Wahlberg. donnie Wahlberg grown that's hmm. that's magical right there it is it's just so hard still my brain just doesn't process it it's like i know i know sometimes i lay in bed at night and i think how friggin lucky i am so quick story yeah quick okay thing. okay okay after the Magic Summer Tour, that program, I've told you how much I love that program. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like as a as an adolescent, the pictures of Jordan in that really spoke to me. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that like he was the cutest in those pictures. Right. So I would like stare at it Aww. all the time. And I would like show people that didn't care. <laughs> like my cousins, like my girl cousins and stuff that were all older. Yeah. And they didn't care. But they humored me. Yeah. And like my mom. And, you know, like I would. Oh, he was just so handsome. But then I think like, OK, so that Jordan. Right. I have now like met. Right. Talked to. Like. Had a conversation. Like I like four times. Yeah. Danced with. Danced with on the cruise. What? Like, like danced, danced. with. Like dance, like, and like I've witnessed like he, him on Instagram live like, talking to my friend Maria. Right, puts his hand out to you and dances with you. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Like, I, does that like is this real life? Is this right. real life? And I think about this and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. This does not add up, and it does not make sense. It's like this is the, he's an imposter. It's not really Jordan. <laughs> That's what I think. It's like sometimes. a hologram. I think like I think like this this is not real. Like I'm gonna wake up someday and this is all gonna be like a dream. But like, how is it that person? I don't know. I don't but know. I like it. I mean, I'm, me I'm okay with it. Me too. Me too. Me too. Jordan me too. Knight. Like, Jeez. look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Would you look at it? I know. This I know. is a mouse pad. I've got two of them. I've got one mouse pad with Jordan. Jor not Jordan. Whoopsies. <laughs> with with Joe singing to me. That happened. That really happened. Where did these mouse, pad, mouse pads come from? Who sent them to Okay, me? so... Um, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, that's okay. It's, I thought um, that you were going to say you ordered them like no. the picture. No, <laughs> no. Um, so this one came from Dawn. She sent me this one. This one's of Joe and I and nice. the one from the cruise. And then this one is from Eva, Funky Diva Creations. Yeah. She sent us like a bunch of stuff. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah. And so she sent me this one. And um, it says, if you go away on the bottom and it's Joe singing to me, like that happened. And I have a mouse pad and I look at it every single day. Every single day I look at it. I use one for my laptop and I use one for my desktop. Right. And so I use two mouse pads. So 
it's really cool that i have two it is really cool and it's perfect yeah so it's very exciting it is so anyway yeah um i'd use them and i love them and that is all amen (laughs) i'm gonna love you (laughs) may 12th 2015 here we go the main event a threesome went to the show, too, and the two memories that stand out from this show was Johnny's speech at the beginning. I was three months postpartum and three months post-heart attack. I think I remember this. I remember her. We read, it, we read a story from her. Becky. Yes. Is this Becky that Chris Kirkpatrick Becky? Is it? Is it that Becky? We'll have to find Hold that. on. I'm going to keep reading. Okay. He struck a chord and I was bawling by the end of his speech. The other memory was seeing Joe do his infamous sweet dreams slash twisted mashup mashup. How's it? How you how what? Okay. But, so Joe, I mean, I'm not a Joe girl. First, first time getting dunked on kind of nervous. <laughs> 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 but like, I don't hate that at all. This is Becky. It's Becky. Yeah. This is Becky. Chris Kirkpatrick, Becky. Becky, who went up to Chris Kirkpatrick and told Chris Kirkpatrick to be on our podcast. Amazing Chris, Becky. And Chris Kirkpatrick emailed us. So it's amazing Becky. Yeah. D- don't worry. He emailed us. Like, what? Right. Hi, it's Chris K. <laughs> I don't even think it said hi. I think it said. Chris, this is Chris K. It's Chris K. Yeah. But that's okay. He emailed us. I know. Amazing. She And she was like, no, just email him right now. I'll give you their email address. <laughs> She's awesome. She Thank you, amazing. Becky. I can't believe I was like, oh, th- th- sound, this sounds real. Yeah, it's Becky. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. As per usual, we had nosebleed seats, but even watching on the big screen, I could feel my cheeks go warm and my heartbeat quicken. I was a married woman, but OMG, was he sexy. Mm-hmm. I am pretty sure my friend Rebecca checked to make sure I was still breathing during his performance. May 26, 2017. The Total Package Tour. This time, my friend Rebecca and a teacher friend of mine, Amanda, went to the show. Melissa had other obligations. Amanda's son and daughter went to the same daycare, so we knew each other for, uh, excuse me, we knew each other pretty well. She was going more for boys to men than new kids. Oh. Rebecca was seven months pregnant. Oh. This would be baby Alexandria's first concert, and she was very active during the show. That's adorable. I didn't know then that this would be my last new kids concert with my partner in boy band crime, Rebecca. We sang along and danced to every song that night. It was fantastic. Fast forward to June 2018. My husband was offered a much better paying job in Texas. And after doing some research on cost of living and teacher pay in Texas, we decided to make the move. I now live in a town just 20 minutes east of Dallas. I didn't know anyone when we moved here. So on a whim and purely by accident, I stumbled onto an NKOTB Facebook fan page. I hung out with a few people I met on the page, but hadn't really met my ride or die concert buddy yet. Then the mixtape tour was announced. And because of my involvement in the Facebook page, I learned about a little thing called barstool seats. Oh, yeah. Now I had a decision to make. Save my pennies and get a plane ticket to Phoenix to go with my Arizona friends. Or save my pennies and splurge on a barstool seat in Dallas and go solo. Did I mention that I've only ever had nosebleed seats and that I'm only 4'11"? I decided that I needed to embrace the YOLO mantra and go for it. I bought a barstool seat and then thanks to the Facebook page knew well enough to quickly jump on a photo group and snag a spot next to Joe. Of course. Oh, yeah. May 17, 2019. OMG, what a night. It's been weeks and I am still smiling. I got there way too early, but I had taken the day off work. There was no way I was going to be able to teach a bunch of second graders all day and be able to concentrate. Plus, I did not want to be late for check-in. I wandered around the arena perimeter for several hours prior to check-in. And before meeting up with my group, I met some pretty cool BH fans, all of whom loved my signed shirt. The heart attack one that Joe had signed in New York City. A few ladies even gushed that they were jealous that I had Joe's signature on it. Then I ran into some of the Naughty by Nature posse who also commented on my shirt, but no new kid sightings. However, I did see Lumpy come out with a handler to take a potty break. There was a group of us gathered outside the venue and a woman came out with a dog that looked a lot like Lumpy. And we all started whispering about him. Then I got brave and just flat out asked, is that Lumpy? And the lady smiled and winked and said, maybe. <laughs> As she guided him back inside. I had only met one person in my photo group once. Otherwise, I knew none of them aside from online. But they were all very nice. As soon as we walked in there was Dan Wood. I got a picture with him and he was very sweet. Everyone I met that night was amazing. I met some people I hope I'd become lifelong friends with. The meet and greet was a whirlwind. I was so nervous. I met Danny first. He hugged me and I said, wow, you really do give great hugs. He chuckled and said, I do. All right. 
Danny. Danny. Dan. Danny. Man. Then I wished him a belated birthday and moved on to Donnie. OMG, Donnie. I'm a Joey girl to my core, but what Donnie said to me, I showed him my shirt and said, my friend in Kansas City told you that you'd be seeing more of these. There are several women across the country who have shirts similar to mine. We call ourselves the Blockhead Cardiac Crew. We all have heart issues. The woman I was speaking of had her heart attack at the soft opening of the Wahlburgers in Kansas City with Paul there. Oh my gosh. He smiled and said, I know, I remember, I want to see them. All of them. Oh. It means you survived and I'm proud of you because it means you're a fighter. But oh please. Oh my God, Donnie. Don't have another one. Donnie Wahlberg. Stop it. That man. Stop. Then he gave me a big hug and I moved on to Joe. By the time I got to Joe, they were positioning us for the photo. So our conversation was from the side. So he was putting his arm around me to pose. Now, I don't know if he had the opportunity to read my shirt, if he recognized me from New York City or if he overheard what Donnie said. As he put his arm around me, he said, please don't have another heart attack, okay? Joey McIntyre, I love you so much! What? To which I said, don't worry, I won't, because then my daughter can't marry your son. Oh! (laughs) He snorted, laughed in response, and I hugged him before asking him the question my daughter had asked me to ask him. Do you you, you drink milk? (laughs) That is the cutest question! (laughs) He chuckled when I explained and said... Not really. Skim milk sometimes. Oh. Then it was on to Jordan. Now I had to ins- instructions for my four-year-old to ask him the same question. Do you drink milk? He was like, wait, <laughs> what? Then I explained again. My four-year-old daughter really wants to know if you drink milk. He grinned and said, no, not really. Really? They don't? I always pictured Joey, them to be Joey milk. Joey does and skim sometimes. I really pictured them to be milk type of people. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say milk. Milk. Not milk. 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 I have to like do it lower. Milk. <laughs> Milk. <laughs> he grinned and said, no, not really. Then I hugged him and wished him a happy birthday and moved on to John. By the time I got to John, I was shaking so bad and I really don't think I said a word to him. And they were hurrying us off the stage by then, but I vowed in that moment that I was going to do bar stools again and I would bring my now four year old the next time. When I say that the women I met that night were all very nice, that really doesn't do it justice. There were two women that went out of their way to tell me I looked beautiful. Ugh. I've always been incredibly self-conscious, so that meant the world to me. Then there were two women I had talked to at length online that made the effort to come find me at the show. And the two women sitting next to me at the show who danced with me and one who bought me a drink when I lent her my portable charger to charge her phone. Aww. Those women made the fact that I went alone a non-issue. So cool. Although I did miss the gushing about the show on the drive back to my house afterwards. They say that once you go barstool, you never go back. This is the truth. And I have to say that's true in my case. Yes. If there is a next time, a next tour, my second generation blockhead will be right there beside me. And if I can snag them, we will be doing individual upgrades. Yes. She was already upset with me for not taking her this time. She is just as much a blockhead as I am. She's a Joey girl with Jordan and Griffin tendencies. (laughs) Now I got to save my pennies for that next time. And to do the cruise. I'm going to get on that boat somehow. Thank you, ladies, for letting me share. Until the next time, or until the next adventure, Becky. Yay, Becky, this was a great story. Becky, this was an amazing story. Oh, my gosh. I loved hearing all of it. Oh, my gosh. And I just have to say, your picture with Joe. Is adorable. It is. Like. Adorable. You look so happy. It's so cute. It's adorable. It oh is. my gosh. You just fit I love right, it. you just fit right under his arm. Just you so. do. Just so. You didn't have to worry about like where do I put my arm? Right. Do I have to go in? Or right. Up? I was like, should I put it over? Or should I put it <laughs> under? Or should I put it over? Under? Over? I couldn't. These pictures are great they though. They are great. But I'll tell you what, man, bar stools, shit. Yeah. Shit. Yes, shit is right. I mean, ugh once you go there it's just you can nope 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 like i would rather do one bar stool than do like five shows like yeah i agree shows. i agree no i agree so that's the way like that's the way that this cookie crumbles that's the way love goes like a moth to a flame burned by the fire <laughs> My love, love is blind. blind. Can't you see, see my, my desire? desire? That's, That's the way love, love goes. goes. I love that song. I do too. That video was cool. It too. was so cool. She, they, she had a tape. 
she had tape she's <laughs> like side a or whatever put it on side a right. they couldn't wait to hear it remember right, the girls right how do i remember that J-Lo? i don't know well j-lo was in it yeah what yeah that was j-lo she was one of the girls i didn't know that yeah j-lo she's cool she is did you cool. see her evolution of dance with jimmy fallon that was cool um i i started watching it uh, i was like middle of the night i fell asleep so becky becky thank you so much you're amazing we love you yes thank you rock on yes all right and also hey, hey, becky hey. thank you for the chris kirkpatrick stuff oh, yes you yes. are very cool all right, this is our final story, and this comes from Julie. And this is Julie's NKOTB mixtape meet greet story. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Brooke and Nikki. I recently posted on the Facebook page thanking you both for your podcast, playing an instrumental role in my dream coming true. Here is my story. I have been an NKOTB fan since 89. Of course, I had all the merchandise, shirts, posters, pins, videos. My first two concerts, I sat way in the back. But who cares? These were the new kids. I was lucky to have a ticket. I always had the teenage dream of growing up and marrying one Jordan girl here. As I went to high school, the love may not have been as strong, but was always there. I went to see them in 1994, which I think was right before the end. Blockheads, correct me if I'm wrong. It was the closest I'd ever been to them. I'll never forget. Joe opened a bottle of water and threw it into the crowd. It splashed on me and I was like, holy crap, that's close enough to touching them. It is. <laughs> it really it is. is. That was Joe's water. That had maybe been placed to his lips. Exactly. There might have been a little bit of back, like backsplash. Backs- that backwash. Backwash. <laughs> that like landed on you. Yeah. Lucky. <laughs> Lucky duck. Lucky duck with that saliva. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was sad when they broke up. A part of my childhood was gone. When they reunited, I couldn't have been happier and was so excited to see them again. Every time I went to a concert, the show just got better and better. And each time we purchased tickets closer and closer. In 2017, we said, that's it. Next tour. We're meeting them. YOLO. YOLO, YOLO. In October, my sister-in-law was able to get five star and fourth row for the mixtape tour. I almost cried when I heard. Then I started thinking, I really have to find a group that I can, that can help me out with this whole process. I wanted to know what I was getting into. So it would go well. That's when I found MSCW. I joined the group looking for guidance and found so much more. Other fans that want to talk about new kids on the block, celebrate and embrace the sisterhood and discuss 80s and 90s pop culture. I found my people. Yeah, you did. You did. We're so happy you did. Yes. So these months before the actual concert have been spent asking questions, reading responses, listening to stories, and trying to put a photo group together. A crazy coincidence about the photo group. I found one and asked if my friends and I could join. Turns out the girl in charge of the group was friends with my sister-in-law throughout her school years, but they lost touch. That's crazy. That is crazy. Like, what are the chances? Immediately, we thought, NKOTB bringing blockheads together again? How cool is that? They do. They do it. We see it all the time. Brooke and Nikki, here's the part that leads to you. I listened to the Donnie podcast episode, and what really struck me was his put it out in the universe and it can happen comment. I started thinking that way, especially about the meet and greet. The day of the concert, I was so nervous. When we arrived, we had an incomplete group. It took a while, but we found the people we needed, and I was even able to stand next to Jordan, which I wasn't sure would happen at first. As we waited for our turn, I enjoyed watching the reactions as others came out from behind the curtains. Some were smiling, shrieking, hugging each other. One girl was crying. I wonder what mine would be. Then it was our turn to get in line. I swear, as I stood there, flashes of my new kid's memories came back. Oh my gosh, this is like giving me like... The feels. It's giving me the feels. Um, Buying pins and machines at the grocery store, going to music land for posters, getting t-shirts for Christmas, watching hours of video over and over. Then I almost cried. But instead, I took a breath because it was our turn. Danny was first. I said, hi, Danny. Thanks for 30 years. He said, you're welcome. I was going to move on, but we were stopped for a minute. Donnie was taking his time comforting a girl in our group that was crying. 
My friend started chatting it up with Danny about t-shirt tags. His was sticking out before we went in and someone had tucked it in for him. He said, yeah, I hate tags. They usually cut them out for us. I like the shirts without the tags. I just nodded because I was thinking, um, this is a normal conversation about shirts, but with a new kid. So true. So crazy. Donnie was next and I said the same thing. Thanks for 30 years and hugged him. He said, well, that's impossible. You look like you're 29. Donnie Wahlberg. Donald. You, you love you. I'm thinking, here's my heart, Donnie Wahlberg. You can have it. (laughs) Then I said, I put this moment out into the universe and it's happening now. He looked at me in the eyes and said, I'm proud of you. Kissed me on the cheek and hugged me again. National freaking treasure. My dream man was next. I said, it's so nice to finally meet you after 30 years. I hugged him and stood next to him for the pic. When the photographer said, get ready, Jordan. Sorry. When the photographer said, get ready, Jordan said, okay, get in here and pulled me a little closer. Oh, my God. After the pic, he turned to me and said, I hope you have a really fun time at the show tonight. What? Jordan. (laughs) What you what a gem. Oh my gosh. What a gentleman. That's crazy. That's really sweet. That's a great Jordan moment. That is. I said, I absolutely will, and thank you. After I hugged Joe, he stopped me to read my shirt out loud. Wife, mother, boy band lover. But he didn't say the most important part. So I pointed it to I pointed to it and said, Hashtag blockhead for life. He said, Oh, and nodded his head. <laughs> That's Joe. That's such a Joe move. That is. Um, then I had to move on to John. So I said, hi, John, I hear you give the best hugs. He laughed and said, thank you. And proceeded to squeeze me so tight as he was doing it. I said, oh, and you absolutely do. Thank you so much. (laughs) As I left that room, I was in shock. I managed to say something to each one of them. My friends asked, are you okay? My response, you guys, Donnie effing Wahlberg kissed my cheek. I got a little misty eyed momentarily, but after that, the party was on. I danced all night and could not believe my luck with the seats. We even got to touch Donnie's hand again when he ran through to the B stage. So there it is. I know some people have better stories and maybe more interactions, and that's awesome. Mine is just a little something that made me happy, makes me feel like I can do anything if I try, and most importantly, believe that I can make it happen. It's so friggin' true. It is. It's so friggin' true. Yeah. And here's the thing. Everybody has a different story. Absolutely. Everybody has a different story and everybody's story. We want to hear all of them. This is an amazing story. Amazing. All of the stories we get are amazing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> do to do. This is why if I never listened to that podcast, I wouldn't have taken the universe comment to heart and I wouldn't have had the courage to say it which led to so much more than I ever envisioned it and than I ever envisioned. If I never joined the group, I wouldn't have had all the helpful hints and information I needed to prepare. It's been a few days since the meeting and I've gone through so many emotions, nervousness, excitement, pure joy, sadness, because it's over for now. And then a full on ugly cry when I realized the dream came true. We are so lucky to be able to relive our teenage years again with the new kids. It means so much more this time around. I am all in and never want it to end. Next goals, bar stools, and a selfie to be continued. Thanks for reading and all the inspiration. This is amazing. Oh, I love her shirt. Wife, mother, boy band lover. So cool. I love that. So cool. There's Joe. This is so great. Thank you so, 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 so picture. much, Julie. That's, that's a, a great, that's picture. A great picture. Yeah. And I'm so glad you found the group. And I'm so glad that we have you in the group. So thank you. Totally. We appreciate you. We appreciate you being here. Yeah. And, we and ple- sending your story. And thank you. Like, you guys. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Like, we want to hear them. We want to hear everything. I mean, it's just, we love doing this. This is what we love to do. So we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep doing it. You guys keep sending the stories. We keep doing it. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. Still sounds good to me. 
Like, we were, were 17. 17. So play that song for me. Come on, Eileen. Still sounds good to me. <laughs> so, right. that's so that's it. it. Um, come, if you're on Pinterest, come, come find us. Come find us. Come follow us. Come, yeah. uh, come check on, out, Eileen. <laughs> check out all the all the hard work Nikki's done. Hey, <laughs> but you'll have you'll be able to go on. That sounded like a dog bark. What was that? <laughs> Something on your floor. Oh, <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> so yeah, so follow us on Pinterest now. Yeah. Um. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, come join come us. Join it, please. Um, find us on Twitter. Find so us called on Twitter. Whatever. Yes. Instagram, my so called whatever. Yep. Send us your stories. Right. My so called whatever at gmail.com. Yes. Go to our website, my so called whatever.com. Yes, please. And you'll see the pics and stuff from today's show. Yeah. And don't don't hang up. No, not hang up, but don't leave too soon because you want to hear our messages at the end of the episode. So keep on listening. Yeah. And if, and you wanna, if you'd like to send one. Yeah. Send it to 857 857- Two seven one one zero four seven. I'll never remember that number. Once again, <laughs> it's eight five seven two seven one one zero four seven. Send us a text, or you can leave us a message. Leave us a message after the beep. Yep, 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 yep. Sorry, we don't have any messages. We just have a, oh, text, it's a message. text message. Yes, cool, cool, cool. So it says, "Hey, Brooke and Nikki, I'm a newbie to your podcast. I love it. I've been binging for the last few weeks. Right now, I'm on step one sixteen. I've only listened to block party episodes. I just wanted to say hi. I have a story to tell, but I need to find the right time. What? Sorry, I have a story to tell, but I just need to find the time to type it out. That, that was, took that took a few tries. Yep. Yeah. Um, love ya, Erica." Thanks, Thanks, Erica. Erica. We can't wait. Yeah. So, yeah. Send us a message. You can do a text message or you can uh, leave us a message on on the missile call, whatever party line. We love it. That's it. That's That's all we got. So next week. Yeah. We'll see you then. Yes. And send us your pictures and stuff and, you know, yeah, for like your, your house. Yeah. 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 From yeah. like 80s and 90s. 80s and 90s. Send them our way. Did you have that like mauve and like, like emerald green motif going on like my mom did? Did you have that mauve bathroom in. with carpet? Hey. How you doing? Nan had the carpet in the bathroom. So she carpet had the hard bathroom. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, whose great idea was that? I have no idea. I remember like, getting I out of the idea. shower and what? I was like, Ugh. this is weird. It's wet. Yeah, wet carpet. Yeah. I have a great idea. Let's take a place where people pee. Yeah. And men pee standing up. Yeah. And like little boys. Right. Little and boys. let's put that carpet pee all around it. That pee everywhere. Let's also put carpet on the toilet seats that we put down. Yes. Or sometimes they don't. Let's put carpet on the back of the toilet bowl. Yeah. What was that? Let's put carpet all over. Yes. Wall to wall. So that they can pee all over it. Jeepers creepers. That is disgusting. I used to get, I can't remember whose carpet it was, but it was so long that my like toes would get caught in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember. That like we'll, shag carpet. Yes. But we'll talk more about that. Yep. Next episode. So, so we'll so see keep you it next real. Time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.